Hi, this is Tom from Life 4.0. Today's video is going to walk you through how to clean and anti-foul your paddle wheel transducer. I'm going to go through on our boat how we do it for a Raymarine DST 800, but the process applies to any kind of paddle wheel transducer you might have. If you're noticing that the speeds are dropping on your knot meter or you're not getting any speed readings at all, that's a good sign that you want to pull the knot meter out and do this kind of cleaning process. So I'm going to walk you through it and hopefully you'll see that it's not very difficult to do. Let's dive in. Okay, so we got the transducer here. Um, I've already taken it out of the through hole and um, cleaned up the parts of this, but just so you know, um, this paddle wheel um, comes out of the mount with this little rod. So the rod goes through this hole here and all the way through the transducer into the uh, permanent side. This is really hard to take off. On the older transducers, this pin would go all the way through and you could push it from one end to the other and pull it with some needle nose pliers. Um, this one goes part way through and stops because this side is the depth transducer. So to get this off, the instruction manual talks about using some diagonal pliers. So I went to the store and I got the smallest size that I could find. And these have a, a very sharp edge on them. And what you need to do is go in here and grab the pin out of this very small indented hole. So um, it's very hard to coax it off. You'll need some very small diagonal pliers like this and plan on digging it out for quite a while to try to get the pin out. Once you get it out a little ways, you can grab it with some needle nose pliers. It's a good idea to get an extra kit, replacement kit, for these um, this paddle wheel and the pin. And I think it might come with these uh, a set of seals. Um, just to have on hand, these things, um, if they get too dirty, they're, they're difficult to clean. And also, um, if it ever gets damaged from outside the hull, for instance, when your boat is being in slings lifted out of the boat, um, I've had a knot meter like this crushed before. So if you forget to take it out before you're hauled out, um, it's good to have an extra set of paddle wheel transducers on hand. So that's how that works. Um, I've cleaned this whole area out as best I can. The next step is to apply this um, water-based anti-fouling transducer paint. So you don't want to use regular um, anti-fouling because it has chemicals in it that can damage the plastic. Um, so you definitely want to use this. Um, there's different debates about whether this affects the depth reading. I haven't had an issue. Um, you can apply it right on top of the depth transducer part. If you have a permanent depth transducer in your boat, instead of like this combo with depth and speed together, if you have a separate depth transducer, you, can, you should be using this paint on the outside of that as well, not regular anti-fouling paint. So I'm going to apply this paint to all the um, surfaces that are exposed up to this, but not touching, up to this seal. Um, and all around the paddle wheel, except for right close to the hole there, and definitely no paint on the pin. You want this to be able to rotate freely. But you can go all, you should be able to go all the way inside here and that'll keep the marine growth to a minimum. We are anchored in Castos. Life 4.0 finds us taking an early retirement so we can travel and explore while we have the health and energy to do this in the way that we want. We spend about half of each year on our sailboat and the rest enjoying land-based living and exploration with a home base in the northeast of the United States. We hope you enjoy our Life 4.0 as you think about shaping your own. So these come with a little bit of a brush and it's good to have some gloves on hand and some paper towels because it's, um, it's pretty persistent paint. So I'm going to go in here first and just apply a light coat to all the surfaces and then I'm going to let it dry and come around and do another coat. It's easy to get this to get too runny. It's really thin um, liquidy paint. So just be aware of that, like drops and stuff. It'll go on really thin. And just make sure you get it all the way down in all the little groove areas. So you want to plan on doing this um, probably a couple times a season. The water-based paint isn't as um, thorough as a regular anti-following paint. That's kind of the easy part there. The hard part is doing the, um, the paddle wheel. 
but again you want to get it on all the surfaces as possible and at some point it's going to be hard to hold on to it okay so there you go so I, I try not to get it right close to the hole but as close around the edge as possible I'm just going to set that down there to dry allow four hours between coats, 24 hours before immersion apply above 50 degrees Fahrenheit 10 degrees C so I'll come back in a couple hours and put another coat on there okay so it's been long enough for the um, transducer paint to dry so I'm going to put it back together and put it in the boat so here's a paddle wheel that goes in there and this is the little pin so that slides through this hole on the outside. And then it goes through the paddle wheel itself. So you want to make sure the paddle wheel is oriented correctly. Um, and actually, I just put it in backwards. So there's the arrow pointing forward um, towards the forward part of the boat. And if I had left it this way, you can see that the cups of the paddle wheel are facing aft, which is incorrect. And I'm going to turn it around so that again this is facing forward and with the paddle wheel face this way the cups um, so the water will hit the, the that flat part of the cup and turn the wheel that way otherwise the speed will get all messed up if it's pointed the wrong way so now I'm going to push the pin in and line up the paddle wheel there we go so that just slides right in there and I'm just sort of pushing it with my finger. I don't want to get it in there too tight. And then to get it to slip in a little bit better, um, you can put, some people put Vaseline on here. I'm not always sure that's a good thing for the rubber. Um, it may be okay. I just use regular dish soap because it's so mild. And I'm rubbing it around the seal there so that the seal doesn't get caught up and so that it runs smoothly when you shove it down in through the through hole. So you don't want a whole lot on there, but you just want enough kind of evenly coated all the way around. Now we're ready for the fun part of actually pulling out the uh, plug in here and um, putting in the real transducer. So again, you want to make sure the arrow is pointing forward and this will just slide right down. So I got some extra paper towels around here because I know it's going to get wet. And I've also got a sponge to put down there to pick up anything. So I'm going to turn collar on here um, counterclockwise. I'm going to spin that guy off and then I'm going to get this down here close so I'm ready to go with that. And I'm just going to kind of work this up here a little bit. And you should sort of get it, feel it sort of coming out but you will have a little, okay now the collar is uh, loose and um, yeah, so now it's kind of lifting up a little bit and I can sort of control the speed of it a little bit so one hand I'm going to try to pull up the blank plug and the other one shove this one down in okay so there we go so I've got the arrow piece facing forward I'm going to spin down that collar so that we get it all the way tight you don't want it really tight because you're going to be the person taking this off again and, and you don't want it to be extremely hard to get it off but you know I'm applying some pressure but a little bit of pressure there but not too much and there we go there's the old plug there um, this has been in the water for about two weeks and look how much growth has already come out of that this didn't have any anti fouling on it so Next time I do anti-foul and I'll, I'll put some on here as well. So now it's just a matter of doing cleanup. So I just want to get as, as much of the water as you can out of here. Um, I mean the water will eventually work its way down to where the bilge pump is, but it's all right here so you might as well get up as much as you can. And the last thing to figure out is like where to put this blank plug. It's got a little hole on the collar there. So I may put a little tiny zip tie or something in there and just tie it to the cord. 
you, I like to keep it right with this rather than stowing it somewhere and you got to figure out where you put it you know six months later so that's the only remaining part and otherwise we're done that's it I hope you liked the video if you did please consider giving us a thumbs up and also subscribing to our channel life 4.0 we look forward to hearing your comments and suggestions and enjoy your time out in the water <laughs>